speaker will be Marcelo uh, Marcelo Oliveira, a co-founder and C uh, CGO at Sensedia, who will tell us five pragmatic steps to unlock open finance with APIs. Hello, Marcelo. How are you? Hi, I'm Ant. I'm good, and you? Yeah, I'm really good. Uh, so yeah, uh, the stage is yours for uh, 20 minutes. So uh, let's go and learn these five, five pragmatic steps. Nice. Hey everyone, uh, I hope you, you are well and, and safe, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here to share and content with, with you. It's not my, our first time with guys from API Days. Uh, we are a huge fans for this conference, by the way. Um, uh, my name is Marcelio, I'm a co-founder from Sensidia. Uh, I will use the next minutes to share with you uh, about our vision in open finance path. And for this time, we are focusing on some pragmatic steps that we have watched in our clients, in our, in our customers' base, and how we are using, uh, helping and seeing these customers uh, with this, this very pragmatic, pragmatic and technical uh, steps to move your strategy or architecture uh, in a right way for open finance. And this is steps using uh, an API approach, okay? Uh, we'll have some minutes at the end of this conference to Q&A, so please uh, take notes your your questions to, to the end, it will be a pleasure, okay? Um, well, to, to be more more pragmatical, <laughs> to organize my, my pitch, uh, I like to break down into five fundamental steps to involve APIs in an open finance journey. The first is the concept for unlock the backend. I will explain in more details in the next slides. Reform your architectural view. How, how we can use or review your architectural approach to help uh, to be faster and efficient in an open finance market. Thinking in a platform power, uh, how you can think in your business and your architecture as a platform. Uh, number four, serious, consider API care and developer experience series. It's a very relevant step for have success at the end in open finance using API approach. And make sure that we are aligned with strategy and architecture and using the API playbooks from markets. It's not a rocket science. There are a lot of pattern that you can use to be more effective in your journey for uh, open finance position. Uh, okay. So uh, let's let's see for the, the these steps in a more deep vision. Okay, uh, we we have found different business with the same challenges. Thinking about the back end, the monolith. Uh, here we have a very high level example. In your way, you have a diffi difficulty in partners onboarding. Uh, lack of control, uh, security issues, etc. The main challenge is how can I move with these monolithic problems for more digital and powerful positioning to help your partners to deliver digital products, to deliver APIs as a product or product as APIs, and to be more innovative. So it's a you need you have to forget about or resolve the basic non-functional problems from your legacy. And we have have seen a lot of companies using the concept for modern integration platform. It's a tool, it's a toolbox from API platform, API events hub, service mesh, uh, different kinds of modern integrations that companies are using to just resolve the non-functional problems, to scale, to be more safe, to be more secure, uh, to deliver different kind of benefits for the business. It's 
this this is the scenario for different kind of of business for retail for payments from insurance but in in financial services market for open open finance this is the fundamental first pragmatic steps you need to resolve your legacy old legacy problem like security scalability uh, onboarding problems etc uh, if if you look for some examples that I, I, I bring some some examples from Sensidia's customers. Uh, here we have our original bank. Original bank has launched a bank as a service using the new architecture, uh, exposing APIs to increase the partners. They, they launched a bank as a service is a high successful and totally based on APIs platform uh, in front of all the legacy. Uh, other bank from Latin America, Tribanco, it's a retail bank. They launched a totally new, new solution, new products in a uh, short time because the product was totally based in APIs pre-designed. Uh, other, other good example, Topazio Bank. Topazio Bank, it's a bank that they moved the strategy for banks and services and they launched uh, some products, new products, and uh, one example, they have a long loan from uh, fintechs uh, networks, and they move for more than 6,000 contracts signed uh, using the ecosystem and the APIs for new products. Um, and just another example for innovation, Cielo is the uh, largest payment company from Latin America. They launched an uh, innovative POS machine, uh, totally based on APIs. And on this platform, the developers can develop apps to run on the POS machine. Now they have more than 200 app apps running in this platform. No one app from this platform was developed by Cielo. It's 100% of these apps was developed by uh, innovative ecosystem from developers. So it's different approach moving the old backend to directing for developer experience, API as a product, new digital products, or increase your powerful for um, integration. So first step is thinking to unlock your backend using a layer from totally non-functional uh, solution from API platform, events, uh, events platform, and service mesh. Okay. Uh, the second one we are talking about the composable business architecture. It's the second. It's how the architecture should solve the problem. The first one is we need to solve the problem for unlock the backend. But how you can resolve? One hard concept for uh, this resolve the unlock the backend is uh, the, the concept from uh, composable business architecture. There's a lot of talk about composable business architecture. Gartner has talked about a, a lot about this. Uh, we, we really believe that this vision uh, can transform architecture in a supplier of business block. It's not about services, but it's about building a business block, uh, building block. Uh, this is the high level view. We need to move your backend for partners and, and user systems through uh, products and new services. Uh, the vision for architecture here is we need to compose uh, your PBC, packaged business capabilities in APIs. So it's not about, it's kind of a piece of legal, but the main point is, is it's not a general functionality, it's a business capability grouped by APIs and delivered uh, through microservices and API. The mindset is anything can be composable in your business solution. Uh, new ways to engage your developers to use the old software 
through this approach for composable business, composable architecture. And these APIs are grouped by products uh, to deliver for your ecosystem as a product. But your architecture is building, uh, looking for packaged business capabilities, a kind of business building blocks for business uh, solution, business uh, features. Um, and it's, it's important to, to, to say that it's very relevant new skills. Uh, you have to understand about product mindset for APIs, adaptive governance. It's important to, to have an API governance uh, deployed. Um, mesh architecture for microservices is a very relevant acknowledgement. Uh, you, did, you have to decide about what kind of APIs you are, you are designing and developing. You for sure you have open APIs, restricted APIs, internal APIs. It's very important to describe and decide about what kind of APIs you are uh, designing and describing for compose your business. Uh, it's a very powerful approach. Uh, we have some some examples for this, but basically we are here moving the problem through APIs, grouping by product, API as a product, to deliver for these partners. Just for one example, Hello, it's a payment card company. It's a large one of the largest from Latin America. More than uh, 140 million cards. Uh, they are API based. They have developers portals for APIs uh, and one of the use cases from this approach from composable business architecture there, they have an anti-fraud monolithic systems. Uh, it's an old system to, to work with fraud, to identify and fraud, frauds. Uh, they composed these features in building blocks through microservices, uh, delivery this as a product. So they have product APIs developer APIs from, from anti-fraud solutions. And they now they are 15 times increase the processing performance for, for this same feature. And now they are ready and enabling, enabling different kind of partners using the solution. It's a total new position. Now we are providing products as an API for our, for, for our anti-fraud solution and construct it over your old software using composable architecture uh, position. Uh, so we are moving the direct integration from bank, for, uh, for clients, for bank, for public APIs, for different third-party banks and customer direct, customer third-party apps, etc. So it's moving for the actual model for open banking, open financing, or bank as a service model, independent of regulation, okay? Um, so we need to unlock your legacy. You need to understand and resolve your architecture. Now we are talking about platform position. Once you have the result, resolved the technical, more basic technical questions, we need to change your position it's about it's about position the solution as a platform it's not more uh, a business flight fight it's a platform fight this is the new game for differentiation just to have a basic discussion here independent of your kind of uh, vision from api i ah, will have i will have open apis i will decide to to create internal APIs, okay, no matters your business, no matter your strategy, you need to think as a platform. It's who kind of, what kind of partner, what kind of developer will use my APIs? This is the point. So Gartner has a, a good vision that we have three styles of digital platform. Uh, internal platform, when you are just using our APIs for developers internally, uh, restricted APIs, to expose your APIs for specific partners or public APIs, a public platform. 
So uh, you can position yourself as an internal platform, restricted platform, or public platform. But no matter where you're moving, you need to think about platform. You need to think about ecosystem. Uh, some examples. Uh, we have, for instance, in a Silicon Valley company, have a new uh, Uber, like a public uh, platform with a lot of APIs from innovation. Uh, we have Amazon, where some APIs for restricted use from specific uh, partners. And we have Netflix, a lot of APIs, a lot of apps, 100% developed by Netflix in internal use. On the right side, we just put some examples from Synthesia's customers. We have different customers using, uh, position themselves as an open or, or public platform, uh, exposing APIs for the world. We have some examples from companies using APIs for integrate with some partners, for marketplaces, for payment chains, for insurance network, different business, for the same position from as a restricted platform. And we have a lot of customers using the approach for position as a platform for internal APIs. Using APIs to be faster to launch new digital products, to be faster to understand or scale the digital initiative. Okay, so it's very relevant to think about platform position. Uh, I, I like this, this quote from Philip Kotler. The competition is not only between companies, it's between business ecosystems. How we can position ourselves as a platform. Okay, move on. Uh, the number four is more fundam fundamental basics. It's take care of your ecosystem. It's very, I have good news. You have a, a high potential to improve your power from APIs have a, a lot of companies or partners using your platform. But the concern is that a lot of companies using your platform, that a lot of companies using your APIs. You need to govern, you, uh, you need to be a good experience for your partners or developers. So it's about this, this is the, this pragmatical step. So two points, improve your developer experience your partner onboarding, and empower your API care operation. Let's move. Yeah, uh, when I'm talking about ecosystem is how I, this is a garden view for uh, different points from or concerns about ecosystem. And the ecosystem management, it's how you, you're managing your developers, your partners, uh, your marketplace, etc. But the point is, once you build, you build your, 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 run your APIs as a platform, okay, now what? How to attract, attract and engage partners? How to support and onboard developer and partners? Uh, is the documentation up to date? Is there any one question, support and troubleshoot? How can I communication, communicate with and engage my, my, my partnerships? about changes and API evolutions. So a lot of questions that we need to address. And our suggestion here is be serious about developer experience. Invest on developer experience. Uh, it's very important to provide a very good experience for self-services, the onboarding for uh, new partners, uh, Provide a sandbox, a lot of SDKs or um, code examples uh, in a dev culture. It's not a retail culture, it's a dev culture. So it's very relevant to have a, a specific approach for this. Um, and once we prov you provide a good experience to start the relationship with developers, it's, it's, it's key to understand and to monitor your API to be sure that we are taking care for your ecosystem. So SLA, a scalability, uh, stability, uh, throttling for your, for protect you, your customer backend. So it's very relevant to have a cockpit to monitor, to understand the behavior for uh, your partner ecosystems and to help your partner 
to understand uh, what's working and what is not working. Uh, Centidia is provide this 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 component solution for our, our partners. It's very very useful for understand the behavior. Okay, uh, a lot of alerts, uh, understand the logs, be proactive to help help the developers on to to understand and to resolve possible problems. Okay, and. At the end, once we have unlocked your backend, you resolve the architecture, uh, you're thinking in platform, and you are taking care for your ecosystems. But the end is you need to align this position with the business strategy. You need to decide which is, will be the first financial product that will move for APIs, align it which strategy. You need to use Playbook for this uh, to be very relevant. And right now, uh, on the financial services market, we have a big opportunity to be more, even more strategic as a tech guys, as architecture providers. Uh, there are a lot of new technologies on the market uh, that, that can help us. Uh, in different kind of markets, we have different kind of regulation or no regulation. Uh, the customers today they are they have more expectation about user friendly experience, and in on the last we have new competitors on this landscape. Uh, the great tech the tech giants Google, Amazon, Facebook, Alibaba. So it's it's. The relevant this movement to be more agile and to be more digital. Uh, in the open finance strategy, make it possible because uh, this is uh, this is exactly a way to be more pluggable to position as a bureau of services in financial services. It's not just a bank or a finance institutes. It's about bankers of services, about uh, open banking. Um, so. We, are, we have found a lot of different regulations, but one, we have one uh, certain. It's a word movement. It's a high hide and bold movement. Uh, the open finance for regulation or without regulation, it's a global movement. Uh, we have some countries like Brazil, Mexico, the uh, Europe, uh, UK, Australia, they, 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 they regions, they are regulating or will regulate the, the open finance, open banking markets. But some relevant region, like here in the US, they have both movement from open banking and bank as a service without regulation. It's a market driving regulation, but it is a, a movement. For sure, this is a, a huge movement, a lot of inspirations. Sensija has an opportunity to work with different banks in different countries with different regulations in some countries without regulations. It's a, it's a hard movement. This is the point. So uh, when we talk about playbook, uh, I would like to just present in one minute the playbook that Sensija has developed uh, to help the companies to understand. The, since the first step from understand the journey, construct the business case, using the platform, the service mesh, the API and uh, standards, the develop and design the governance process and, and developer experience. So it's the best and the security way to your journey from monolith to open banking using the uh, problem that we already resolved in other scenarios. But it's not about playbook, it's about playbook and solution. Remember that we need to resolve the unlock backend. So we are talking about a scalable and complete platform to understand and to expose your legacy as a as microservices and API uh, with governance, security, scalability, etc. Uh, so what we called as open banking or open finance playbook is the platform and the playbook, the, the, the set of steps or place you need to you have you can use to be faster and confident on the movement for 
unlock your legacy, evolve your architecture, position ourselves as a platform, thinking about API care and developer experience, and at the end, uh, deliver this aligned with the business strategy. Uh, just to remember the five steps that we consider pragmatic and basic steps that we are watching. Uh, big number of companies using these five steps to move for open finance positioning. Um, so, uh, Sensija, just to, to finalize, Sensija, it's uh, companies we provide a full solution for open finance through API platform, modern integration platform, and specialized services. Sensija is uh, was recognized and uh, visionary and as lead, uh, in in Gardner and leader by Forrester. Uh, if you are serious about API economy, if you are serious about open finance, it will be a pleasure to discuss with you guys about this like these topics now on or in other moments. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Marcelo. I agree with you. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And, uh, and, and, and yes, and so we've reached um, uh, our time and I didn't want to interrupt such beautiful slides and insightful uh, comments uh, for, uh, for the time. So if you want to know more about uh, uh, Marcelo, uh, these, the vision, the five steps to unlock open banking and, uh, and know more about uh, what, uh, what products and Sadia does, don't hesitate to go to uh, their website. And we will go for a break right now. Thank you very much, Marcelo, for being with us.